god. I am like a teenage girl because I literally can't even. Look at that. Coffee's getting hot. That rabbit hide is nicely salted. Check this out, look outside. Oh my goodness. Just like your mama. Got a couple inches last night. My initial dream was to buy a little parcel in the country and build my own little vacation retreat. I started my search the same as anyone, lots of Googling and lots of phone calls to realtors that specialize in rural properties and trying to become as familiar with the local building codes as I could. I live in Oregon and some of the most affordable and available land in the U.S. can be found in the southern and eastern portions of the state. But there's a good reason why it's cheap. In the rain shadow of the Cascade Mountains, it's arid and rocky and subject to bitterly cold winters and blazing hot summers. After speaking with a number of realtors and agents and whatever silly middleman is required to buy land, I used up all my vacation time and most weekends making the drive down to look at parcels. I considered buying land in such far-flung locations as Alaska and Arizona, but it was imperative to me that I actually walk the land that I was considering purchasing, and I was fortunate that I was in a position to do that. I walked some that looked really good on the real estate website, but much less favorable in person. Maybe it was on a slope, or maybe a significant portion was covered by rock and unbuildable, or maybe the ever-present human factor can make a parcel less desirable. I knew that I wanted something remote, well away from anyone, and very much off the beaten path. I wanted the property to be well wooded, and I also wanted to be close to public land, such as the National Forest or Bureau of Land Management. But solitude was the most important thing. Uh, one potential site was great, except that even I could hear the neighbor's generator humming in the distance at all times, so not ideal. But nothing better for scouting sites than my mint 1982 Honda Trail 110. After looking for the better part of two years and about two dozen different properties, I finally found one that I thought was perfect for me. Later that winter and into the spring, I started collecting materials and bringing them to the property site. I bought a cheap wall tent off of Amazon, and it has been working phenomenally, and a little wood stove and built myself a nice foundation for my wall tent. It was actually a rather comfortable little setup. At first I was using this little inflatable mattress, but later I scored a folding bed from Craigslist and spent many a happy night with that little stove roaring away in my peaceful little acreage. I started on the foundation for a cabin as large as I could legally build without getting a building permit in my county. Um, actually, I think I built it just shy of the minimum by about one square foot. Uh, it was a back-breaking process using a digging bar to pick and literally split the rocks and break them into pieces that I could move. Moving some of the rocks on the surface, I would occasionally come across these little uh, western skinks. Adorable little guys, one of my favorite lizards in the area. They can literally drop that bright blue tail and run away, a phenomenon known as autonomy, uh, while the potential predator is distracted by the writhing blue tail and so then, you know, the animal can get away. I dug post holes deep enough until I got all these post holes three feet deep, well below the frost line at my latitude and elevation to prevent frost heaving in the winter. I placed the posts in the ground and got them as plumb and level as I could before backfilling with some broken rock and, you know, a couple handfuls of concrete mix just to hold it all together. It's pretty funny, shortly after I closed on the deal, um, I hung my obligatory no trespassing signs. Kind of a big step in ownership. Um, you know, it's kind of a weird notion to own land to me. But anyway, one of my visits back, I was completely heartbroken when I got to my property to find the signs had been torn down and crumpled up like a sheet of paper. Like they were balled up. It was the weirdest thing. Um, unfortunately, off-grid looters are a thing. Uh, there are people whose off-grid ideals have more to do with substance abuse and addiction than, you know, living a slower, more deliberate, you know, self-sufficient lifestyle. And uh, they, they steal from other people who are living off-grid. So, um, like many smart people, I have cameras up at my property, and you will never guess what I saw when I went to check my cameras. Look at this. Look at this guy. I mean, I, I have to respect that sort of indifference to human-imposed signage and property lines and other such kind of constructs. But anyway, uh, 
gosh, it set my heart rate through the roof for a little while, but I was really happy to see who did it. Meanwhile, I also began working on an outhouse. I dug several small holes, kind of test holes, to test uh, the soil percolation rates, uh, the rates that uh, liquid is absorbed into the soil, to try to find an area that had a good balance of, you know, diggability and also had a good percolation rate that I thought would be a good place for an outhouse. And I finally settled on a place that actually overlooked my wildflower garden because uh, you know, while making poopy, it's really nice to have a nice view. And also, uh, I plan to plant a bunch of lavender and rosemary around my outhouse to kind of keep the odors down and bring in some beneficial insects. While I was digging my uh, test holes, I came across a couple of these little chunks of obsidian. Uh, m many of them are a couple feet down, and I'm not an expert, but they appear to be broken intentionally. Uh, maybe part of a larger core that was worked and shaped on my property. But in any case, it was amazing uh, to be able to hold, uh, you know, a real tangible legacy of the history of my property. So a lot of the lumber that I used on my outhouse and even uh, some portions of my cabin, I actually milled from the trees that were on my property using this uh, Grandenburg uh, chainsaw mill. This thing works amazing. Uh, I, I really love it. I can't recommend it enough for folks um, who live off grid and you know, it's it's amazing to have the ability to knock out a board any time that you need. And uh, it works okay. It leaves a relatively rough board. Uh, but, I mean, with, with enough tweaking and everything, you can make uh, pretty good quality dimensional lumber out of it. But I used it mainly for, you know, pieces that I didn't mind if they had kind of a rougher feel to them. So, kind of a blessing in disguise. Uh, later on that spring, I was uh, fired from the job that I was working. Um, it, I kind of, you know, decided I didn't want to pay bills or rent anymore, so packed up everything and, uh, you know, made several trips down and dropped it off at the property and closed up shop in the city. Um, uh, in doing so, I had to kind of shift focus on, on my building. I am not a builder. I'm not a construction worker or, or anything like that. I've kind of done some labor jobs in my life, but uh, building anything was kind of new to me. So I decided to uh, simplify things and uh, build a smaller, uh, easier cabin than the one I was initially anticipating building. Um, I found that the more I built, the more that I learned, and it was a good idea for me to get some practice under my belt before I continued with that larger cabin. I was planning on building that when I had a full-time job and thus funds, and that wasn't the case anymore, so decided to start on my smaller cabin. Well, the first step, of course, was to uh, kind of figure out where I wanted to build it. And I, I figured, you know, where I had my wall tent before is a good spot. It gets good, you know, morning kind of uh, exposure to the sun. But it's kind of blocked by some trees in the afternoon, which is especially nice in the summertime. Um, and so I moved my <laughs> tent foundation and uh, leveled the ground out. Uh, gosh, kind of the best that I could. And, uh, you know, put down some, some of these... Uh, blocks to uh, build my foundation on top of. I'm just using regular 2x4s, you know, 16 inch on center, blah blah blah. Um, I honestly don't didn't really know what I was doing, but it actually turned out fairly level and fairly square, uh, about as good as I could hope for. Um, and gosh, I, I did this at the worst possible time when it came to lumber. I think I paid close to $8 a piece for these studs. Uh, way too much money in my opinion, but uh, it's what you know what I had to work with and you know I'm, I'm kind of rapidly dwindling through savings and everything trying to get this thing built and uh, You know in, in pretty short order. I, I had a relatively workable uh, kind of foundation going It really is an amazing feeling to wake up in the morning or whenever you feel like waking up and knowing that you decide What to do that day and the pace? Moving rocks may not sound like a ton of fun, but the fat fuzzy bumblebees love my little wildflower garden. And at the end of every hard day, I'm still treated to the sunset, 100% free and all the sweeter, a daily prelude to some of the darkest skies in the continental US. Thank you so much for letting me share my little journey with you. This is part one of a two part video series. So if you want to see me finish the cabin more or less, check out the second video. Be well and be easy.